Hi everyone, Pang Kong Fox here, the Science Engagement Director for the Kathnawane Foundation. Welcome to the second episode of the Calcium Ion Channel Science Recap. Uh, I'm gonna keep looking over here for a little bit because I've got notes here. I have so much to tell you about. Uh, as mentioned in my last month's video, I had the opportunity to attend a few uh, uh, research meetings and conferences at the end of November and in December. So I started off with two days at the Targeting Epilepsy Workshop that was held at the St. Jude Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. And this was in conjunction with their Pediatric Translational Neuro Sci or Neurosciences Initiative, or their PTNI. This meeting had over 50 researchers and clinicians from academia and industry, as well as representatives from rare disease organizations, including Families SCN2A, um, who was fearless leader, uh, Leah Schuess Myers. She gave the keynote address at our Katnone conference over the summer. So it was great to catch up with her and great to meet so many people. I heard so many success stories about how translational science is really pushing these uh, uh, these treatments for uh, rare epilepsies into the clinical trial pipeline, especially for SCN2A, Dravet syndrome, SCN. 8A and more. Um, after that, I headed over to Nashville to attend the Syngap Research Fund's first Syngap 1 conference. Again, another wonderful mix of academics, industry, uh, working together with another rare disease. So Syngap 1 is a rare neurodevelopmental disease. It's characterized by uh, intellectual disability, developmental delay in speech, fine and gross motor skills, hypotonia, epilepsy, sleep problems. Sounds really familiar, right? So it, it was so great to be there. Mike Ralia, their managing director, uh, along with their board members and families, all gave me such a warm welcome. And, and they have done an amazing job raising money and investing in the right people to move treatments into the clinical trial pipeline for SYNGAP-1. Uh, I also snuck into the Channelopathy Associated Epilepsy Research Centers meeting. This is a consortium of researchers and clinicians who have been focused on sodium and potassium channelopathies, but Dr. Jen Pan from the Broad Institute, uh, she was there and she put Cat one a on the board uh, presenting her work on Cat one a variants. So thank you to Dr. Pan for doing that. And then I capped off uh, my week at the American Epilepsy Society's annual conference, also in Nashville, uh, where we had a booth set up. So I wasn't able to attend as many of the talks as I planned, but I was able to, to make connections with uh, clinicians and doctors from all over the world who have Cat one a patients. They would come up and say, hey, I think I have like one patient. I was like, great, send them our way. So hopefully we'll be hearing from them. Uh, I also met some representatives from a few biotech and pharma companies and I will be following up with them. I also really got to know the Invitae team, uh, the genetic testing company. We are actually going to be launching a new program with them very soon and I'll talk about that a little later. I met the combined brain team. We do our biobanking through them as well as um, other activities and also the Rare X team. Um, it's, it's so nice to meet these people in person when you've just spent the last couple of months, you know, looking at them on a screen. So that was great. So I, I wish I could tell you everything that I learned, but in the few minutes that I do have with you, I really want to highlight some of the success stories that I heard and how we as a foundation can also get there. So a big theme, a big theme throughout all these meetings was collaboration. Nothing is going to get done alone. And this was really evident at the Syngap Research Fund meeting, as well as the Targeting Epilepsy meeting, uh, where there were so many um, there were different stakeholders banding together to help these rare diseases. The epilepsy workshop had people from biotech and pharma telling the academics, telling the patient advocacy groups, hey, we've got money, we've got resources, we want to help, so come and talk to us. So that's an avenue that we are going to be exploring in the next year. Uh, Stoke Therapeutics was there working with academic labs to design and test ASOs using their Tango approach for loss of function variants. They've actually made an ASO for Dravet syndrome. Dravet syndrome is one of those developmental and epileptic encephalopathies or DEEs with very severe seizures. Um, studies with this ASO in mice showed a restoration of uh, 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 firing in neurons, a decrease in SUDEP. And this has led to a small observational study in human patients um, where they showed a 50% reduction in seizure, uh, seizure frequency, as well as an improvement in non-seizure symptoms such as cognition and memory. And this is such a big deal, right? I mean, a common thing that just that kept coming up over and over again in these uh, episode, uh, epilepsy meetings is that, okay, sure, we're focusing on epilepsies, but are, are seizures really the number one um, thing that, that that these families really want to treat. What else do families and patients feel would increase or improve their quality of life? So things like cognition, memory, learning, behavior, movement, the, all of those are still at the forefront, even when we're just thinking about epilepsy treatments. 
Praxis, another biotech company, partnered with Families SCN2A, and they, they now have two therapies in the works. They have a small molecule for DEEs that actually completely block seizures in the mouse models. That's pretty darn amazing. Um, it was tolerated well in healthy patients and also showed significant differences between the placebo, the placebo group versus the treatment groups. Um, they also have an ASO. Uh, for the gain of function variants that showed significant reduction in seizures and SUDEP, as well as improvements in behavior and locomotion in mouse models. And so now they're moving on into a, a small proof of study concept or proof of concept study in about four patients. Uh, Syngat Research Fund is working with Johns Hopkins University and Tavard, another biotech company, on treatments. Uh, using some new RNA technology that's focused on tRNAs. So tRNAs are the RNA molecules that read the codons and the messenger RNA, and they bring the correct amino acid in to make a protein. So this is, uh, this is all new technology, and so this is really exciting for them. And these are just a few of the examples of what is happening in the world of rare epilepsies and in the rare diseases associated with epilepsy. And this theme also continued on at AES, and I'm actually going to cheat and just direct you guys to a link that we, are, that we have in the news letter uh, to an article that really nicely sums up all of the advancements for rare epilepsies that, that was presented at AES. Okay, so what does this mean for the Kaknawane community? Where are our treatments? Where are the biotech companies and pharma companies willing to work with us? And I'll say right now that that they are on their way. We are taking all the right steps to get in that or to, to, to move in that direction. Um, I actually had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with UCB, which is a global pharmaceutical company that recently required Zogenics. And Zogenics was a rare disease therapy company. And when I spoke to them, they were just so impressed with everything that the foundation has done in terms of building our preclinical toolbox in just two and a half years. So things like the natural history study, um, our biobanking program, the uh, data collection program with rare eggs, anything that involved our families and our patients' um, participation and engagement, they were they loved it all. And so they actually connected us with Tavard, the company that is working with that new RNA technology. And we are in the process of setting up a meeting with them in early 2023 to talk. So that's really exciting for us, but obviously we cannot stop there, right? We need to mobilize if we want to be part of that clinical trials club. Uh, we need to expand our natural history study. So those of you who have already signed up, keep going back every year to update your surveys or fill out any, any new ones. Um, those who haven't signed up yet, please do. And if you have any questions about it, please reach out to the foundation. We are happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, we also need to increase the number of part uh, participants in our CACNA 1A data collection program through RareX. And I know as a CACNA 1A parent, there, it's, it's a lot of surveys, it's a lot of things to fill out and they take time. But here's the thing companies need to know this information, okay? They need to know how many patients there are. They need to know what the symptoms are. When do they start? How do they progress? How severe are they? We cannot fully understand a disease without patient data. We cannot uh, develop the correct treatments if we don't have this patient data. And this is how families SCN2A, Dravet Syndrome Foundation, Syngat Research Fund, this is how they have made it to where they are now by keeping their patients and families engaged. Um, a new thing that I want to mention is that there is there is this new platform that was everywhere um, that entire week. And this is Citizen, which is uh, which was recently acquired by uh, the genetic testing company Invitae. And this was a game changer for some of these rare disease groups um, for getting treatments into the pipeline. So Citizen is a free service being offered to any patient who has had a seizure or has a developmental delay. And I think that basically covers our entire CAPNA 1A community. So it's an electronic medical record or EMR database. And what you do is you sign up once, you might have to go in and update a couple things every now and then, but the platform basically compiles every single medical record that you or your child has, and it does this all in one place. Um, most hospitals are not obligated to keep records past seven years. So this is a way to preserve those medical records, put them in all one, uh, put them all in one place, share them with, whom, with whomever you want. So every single medical record in one place forever and ever or until the internet dies, right? So for patients, this is sort of a no brainer. Let's, let's do it. Um, from a research or treatment perspective point of view, this is crucial. Uh, there were so many examples at these meetings of how the EMR data was used to reconstruct like a retrospective natural history study for patients or for an entire disease. You can track 
um, all the, the visits that were related to certain symptoms, the onset of symptoms, the type of medications that we're using or that were being used, the possibilities are endless here. So the EMR data, in addition to the natural history data and any other patient data that, that we can collect, this is all a gold mine for therapeutic development. And it can't be done without all of our CACNO and A families doing their part. So I'm going to end it here. Um, I know that I, I've sort of gone over the amount of time that I wanted to, to talk, and I, I don't have enough time to really acknowledge all of the great people that I met and saw, but I just wanted to let you know that we did have representatives from our CACNO and A research network there, including um, Ingo Helbig, Ann Paduri, Lena Lusk, Lacey Smith, Dennis Lal, and Arthur and Tobias from his team working on our portal, L. George, Jen Pan, Ingrid Sheffer, I'm sure I'm forgetting more people, but but we had great representation there. You know, these these researchers and clinicians are always there representing Captain Wene and working for us also. So that was great. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna stop it here. I want to wish everybody a happy holidays. Um, stay healthy, stay safe. We have new projects and new initiatives planned for 2023, and we cannot wait to see what this next year is going to bring. So I will see you all in January.